and some big, some big black dudes. Yeah, that's a big day. Yeah, that's a big day. Uh, your next comic coming to the stage, hail from the Midwest. He just released a new uh, comedy album called It'll Be Fun. Uh, you can get that on iTunes or just Google that. Everybody give a round of applause for the one and only Spencer Dobson. How are you guys doing? Nice to be here, man. This is beautiful. I uh, I moved from Los Angeles uh, back to the Midwest a couple of years ago because my family got old and they needed help like opening jars. <laughs> and when I got there, my grandma lived in an apartment, but she was in her 90s, so I moved her to an assisted living because they have a dude that comes in once a week and plays accordion. And they have three meals a day, and they have a nurse, and they have other old people to sit and listen to her long, boring stories and go in there and make my face hurt. And now that her needs are met, and her cares are cared for, and her health is tended to, she has to invent ways to make my life miserable. The other day, I swear to God, I'm going on the road, I call her, I go, Grandma, We'll be on the road for about a week, I love you, and she goes, If I die, it's your fault! <laughs> You're 93, you can't put that on me! <laughs> it's a nice place, I didn't leave her in a basement with a six-pack of Shasta and some slim gym for guys. <laughs> Look, at 93, you'll die if the croutons are too sharp, you know? <laughs> something to make her happy. So I took her to the Nutcracker, because it's a big spectacle, right? I don't know anything about ballet. I've never been. I gotta tell you, the music's amazing. It's in every Christmas movie you've ever seen. Ballet dancers are beautiful women. They're athletic. They're wearing the tightest clothing you've ever seen. And they're like super bendy, right? <laughs> Here's the thing. In the performance, <laughs> and they too are wearing the tightest clothing I've ever seen, and they're jumping. So there's no place you can look that somebody's package isn't bouncing like right on the field of vision. Like they need to put a warning on the ticket. Like this show is just lousy with package. But, in history was named like Duke Frederick von Mankamel Toe. <laughs> Everybody's just paying homage to him in costume or something. <laughs> so my grandma's mad at me, right, because I don't have any kids. Sexually, more of a hobbyist. <laughs> and like, there's a lot of reasons to have babies, right? Like maybe you're in love with each other, or maybe the condom broke. <laughs> a terrible reason to bring a human life onto the earth is to make a 93-year-old woman <laughs> shut up about it, right? Because, <laughs> like, she'll die and I'll still be stuck with the kid. And I'd be like, Look, dude, I just wanted her to stop talking. I'd like to live in the woods and learn to fish with her hands and be fun. <laughs> My friends are having kids, though, and it's horrible. Horrifying because I know them, you know, like I know what kind of people they are. And it's not the first round of kids either, right? It's not the round of kids that starts when you're like 13 and goes to like 24, right? Where when they tell you they're having a kid, you go, oh, and you're, you're keeping it. Oh, that's good for you. Yeah. Then there's the 24s to 35s, they go, we're having a kid, and you go, congratulations. My friends are the 35 and up, right? So when they tell you they're having a kid, and Alice comes out, we just feel that we're in a place financially and spiritually and emotionally and that we're capable of providing a life. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> but they turn out to be good parents, right? But when they say that, by the 
way, don't get me wrong, I always go, that's great, right? What I'm always thinking, though, is, I don't think babies even like cocaine, so... <laughs> I don't know if you guys can have anything in common, are you sure? <laughs> But they're like awesome parents, and that's why it's good we don't take a vote on who gets to have a kid, right? I mean, like at weddings, sometimes they have that thing where they go, does anybody see a reason why this man and this woman should be bonded and holy, whatever? Nobody ever says anything. I mean, every now and again, you'll hear people just whisper like, eh. Ah. So what's it gonna happen? <laughs> <laughs> but even in the middle of the ceremony, they were like, does anybody see a reason why this selfish piece of crap and this emotional black hole of a human being shouldn't be responsible for loving and nurturing and feeding and bathing and clothing and educating and sheltering and not turning into a serial killer or a Kardashian. <laughs> a living human child. People still wouldn't say anything, but through the whole church you just hear people whisper, I don't think babies are fucking <laughs> 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 don't get me wrong, I don't hate kids, man. I dated a woman with five babies. <laughs> Five. Five babies. And you would think after five that the last one, when it was being born, would just walk out and be like, hey, everybody, what's going on? But, Kegels, you know, she did the work. It paid off. That's all. You don't know when you're going to be on the market. Do the work. Here's the thing. She got tattoos of all of her babies on her back. And they were like really good tattoos. I mean, one of them was like, nah. But for the most part, she didn't think it through, right? Because sometimes when a man loves a woman, he'll turn that around and put it to the backside. I don't need your whole brood staring up at me, right? girlfriend, you're like, honey, I hate to say this, but any chance we could get a seven-year-old in here to just kind of meme up me? <laughs> 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 okay. I do like kids. I will say, last time I flew to a gig, there was a baby on the plane. And if you see a lot of comedy, you know, every time a comic flies, there's always a baby <laughs> on the plane. <laughs> And that's because every time you fly, there's a friggin' baby on the plane. They, just, they scream their faces off like they howl, and it hurts in your bones, and there's nothing you can do about it but sit there and suffer because babies are stupid. <laughs> you can offer them gum, they just look at you like you're a dick, right? But I had an idea, and I think when a baby inspires an idea, there's something kind of magical about it. And my idea was, if I get off this plane, and there's a man standing there with a machine that will give me a vasectomy. <laughs> I'll give him every penny I have in the world to not be part of Better yet, you invent a laser. When you hit me with it, it alters my DNA just enough so that when my sperm meets an egg, instead of making a baby, it will make, like, Pringles? <laughs> You know, snacks, that would be, <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> I, uh, I don't need a baby, I have a phone. You know, and I love my phone. My phone tells me things that I would have never known without my phone. My phone's amazing. I have Yelp. I clearly do not need Yelp, but I still have Yelp. Yelp tells me about, like, amazing burritos. Yelp, there's a place called Fat Burrito. Yelp took me to. They give you a 16 ounce burrito covered in red sauce and cheese. It's delicious. Yelp needs to come up with a sister site called like Plop. 
<laughs> that will tell you what's going to happen for the rest of your day. <laughs> Maybe I don't have six hours to dedicate to burrito time. <laughs> the reviews would just be like, <laughs> or something too, right? Because sometimes something magical comes out and you don't want to put that on Facebook. People didn't sign up for it, but there's got to be somebody who's like, look, it's the bat signal. <laughs> and they'll be like, I have pimentos for lunch. Mine looks like a Christmas tree. <laughs> That's fantastic, but you need medical help. <laughs> sometimes my phone tells me stuff I don't want to know, though, like Miley Cyrus. I know a lot of stuff about Miley Cyrus. I don't want to know anything about Miley Cyrus. But Miley Cyrus isn't for me, right? But you can't get away from it. You read the news, there's Miley Cyrus on the side. You're on your little Facebook, Miley Cyrus comes down. Now you're at the gas station, there's a TV screen, Miley Cyrus comes out. I want an app, so every time I learn something about Miley Cyrus, Miley Cyrus will learn something about me. <laughs> Store, I see a thing, Miley Cyrus wore disco balls to a party in Miami, she gets a text, Spencer Dobson had too many carbs for lunch, she has no plans for getting rid of them. <laughs> I'm Spencer Dobson, thank you very much.